Hello, and welcome to a new episode of the Bean Boys podcast. My name is Petru Conduraro, and today's guest is the director of Change Agents AAC, founder of the Beam Excellence Initiative, and head editor of Beam Dictionary. Welcome, Bilal Sukar. Thank you, Petru, for the invitation. It's so nice to have you here. Uh, let's start by uh, telling us a little bit about yourself with your own words. Okay, uh, well, I am, uh, I don't know what, how to, to describe what I do. I studied uh, different things, uh, started studying business, didn't like it, it didn't like me as well. And then I studied uh, interior design and fine arts. I graduated as an interior designer like um, back in 1994 and then started my master's in architecture management, shifted to a PhD in performance improvement and through BIM, etc. So it's a bit of a mix. I've, I've, I've worked in art. I worked in as a designer. I've worked, you know, have our own business or change agents, uh, which is a consultancy focusing currently on performance assessment and improvement. Um, I always wear two hats at least, you know. So the business hat and the not-for-profit hat, and and there is a simple reason for that. They are complementary. There's certain things you cannot do except through business. Okay, there's certain you know activities you can only perform efficiently through a business, you know, other than generating revenue, of course. And when you're doing something as uh, not for profit, also you are tapping into a different stream of thought, a different type of people you work with, as well. If you can do these two together, you lots of things can be covered. Yeah. That sounds uh, like a very good mesh. Uh, are you the only, like, do you have more employees uh, do you, uh, in uh, change uh, agents? or? Uh, uh, it changes from time to time, but m- most of the time I work on my own. But when there is a, like a project beyond uh, my own capacity, I would, uh, you know, have uh, subcontractors. I would j- do joint ventures on specific projects. Currently, I only have a couple of uh, people working with me, and they are developers because, you know, like software developers because we're developing a, a specific solution for a client. Um, but it could, it changes from time to time, and uh, that's the beauty of working on your own as well. I have that flexibility, and uh, yeah. I've been working like this since two thousand and four. Yeah, it's been a while. Uh, since yeah. when have you been exposed to BIM? Uh, the first time I got exposed to it probably was in 2002, 2003. And this is, uh, I was just reading research from Salford University, uh, one of the really important universities in the UK. And back then it was the university in digital transformation. And I was reading like a research paper called ND modeling, something of that sort. And so what's what's that, you know? I, uh, and I became really, really curious. And I read it many times and put notes and, and I, I don't know, I, I was just hooked. And then I've uh, written like a small white paper um, and published it online with my friends. And somebody said, ah, oh, you, you write like a researcher, why don't you do research? And that was it, that was the start of it. So I started my research back in 2004, at the same time I started my own business and it's been, you know, complimentary ever since. I understand. It's been a while, soon 20 years. Yeah, soon 20 years, it shows my age. Uh, so so I've been in this uh, since, you know, uh, the early days of what we t- today call BIM. But of course, the concepts covered by BIM are much, much older. Uh, it's not, there's no use really going through the history. I know many people are tempted to go back in history, but you know, from from back then till now, it's there have been cycles of the same discussions repeating themselves. Uh, and there's uh, a common uh, undercurrent. And I'm happy to discuss this with you later on. Yeah. Yeah, this this is interesting with BIM and that's why it's uh, it's also confusing and not easy to to catch up. Like it's evolving all the time. Evolving and repeating, it's not just evolving. Sometimes it's, it, 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 it also stays still. And then people change terms, confuse people with the, with the illusion of change or illusion of progress. But if you look down or look into it deeper, you will see that 
same concepts, new label, new use by date, and it repeats. So certain things are definitely changing, and certain things are still the same. And this is what keeps people confused. Yeah, I completely agree with that. I think uh, the the ideology, the the concepts are always the same, but the tools are evolving and changing all the time. And this is difficult to 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 stay always uh, in in loop with, maybe. I wouldn't say just the tools. The tools actually are a reflection of what's needed. Uh, there, there is a kind of relationship between um, uh, technology. Uh, the processes people use, and of course, the, the political environment, the, the strategies, the you know, the insurance claims, all these things. Uh, and this covered really one of my earliest frameworks or this relationship. And 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 this relationship is two ways. So you always have a uh, people trying to sell you tools that you don't think you need. Okay, so they convince you, uh, you know, to use them, try to to help. Of course, to help their bottom line, but also to help you to improve your productivity. But at the other side as well, there's a pull. So there's a push from one side and there's a pull from another saying, I want to do this better. I, I'm going to search for tools that help me. And this push and pull is very important in dynamics for industry. And you can see from the latest news that uh, about what happened, for example, uh, with some companies criticizing a major uh, software company, when you see this imbalance happen, you know, when 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 there's so much... Uh, a pull from industry and not enough push from technology, which is really a weird place to be in, uh, you find there's imbalance. Things don't, don't work. There's always needed to be some kind of balance between this push and pull between different players. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think this imbalance have been for many, many years, but nobody dared to, to challenge the status quo, if I can say that. Yeah, individuals typically think uh, uh, not too much about their own individual ability, and this is really a problem. You know, when someone, and you hear this a lot from especially young people, and, and even from the people who've been in the business for a long time, they, they just underestimate the ability of a single individual to make change. And that's why they don't make wave. They, they just, uh, they, 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 they put brakes on their own ambitions, put brakes on their own thoughts because of the fear that, even if they say something or do something, it won't change anything. And that's really one of our uh, self-actualizing uh, prophecies. You know, if we think you're not going to be able to achieve something, you won't achieve it. If if you if you if you put yourself in the opposite mindset, it will achieve something. And I will see we'll see from this episode between the architectural companies and the software giant if change will happen. And my money, I'm not a betting man, but my money that things will change because. They said something and they should have said it a long time ago. Yeah, that, that is so true. Like we are holding us back so much. Like you have no idea how long I've been thinking to start this podcast and how many how many times I said, why? I'm not the right person. I don't speak good enough English. I don't know anything. But uh, I, I just I just ignored everything else because I thought like the purpose of this is much more important. Like if no, if everybody says this, Nobody will do it and nobody exactly. will. Uh, this is the only way you can break something and to, to elevate the level, like to, to, to uh, become a resource for people that don't have other resources to, to Absolutely. do something in this. Absolutely. Uh, it just needs, it's just a good intention and, and, and just commitment. Commitment, hard work, the right intention and something good will come out of it. And uh, it doesn't matter how small it starts. If it's persistent, it grows. You know, and you'll see, you'll see, you know, after five years, I'll say, oh, I, I knew Petro when he was, had a, you know, a video cast. And now look at, uh, you know, how famous he is. I'm so lucky <laughs> to have had a, a video cast with him. <laughs> yeah, I hope not. I hope I don't get famous. <laughs> I just want to, to help myself and help others. So this is that's, my that's sole purpose here. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, it's not easy. It's not easy to put yourself to make yourself vulnerable in front of others. This is the biggest challenge we face with ourselves. Like we think yeah, true. about all these things. But yeah, we you you must do it. Like if one in 10 people or 100 people would do it, would would help a lot. So that's why it's really it's it's really important to 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 just yeah. try to break the ice. No matter if you are not you don't have enough trust in yourself. 
Yeah, and and actually, it it, it trusts is cumulative. You you just need small wins at the beginning, correct, and it builds. And even if there's small failures, uh, you know, it's it's one needs to continue to try. And the only thing that will keep people, you know, continue to try if the purpose is uh, is noble, is is like it's gonna help others and have uh, you know benefit. Of course, people can continue trying for financial gain as well. So that's a, another driver for, for many people. Right. Uh, but you need a strong driver. If there's a strong driver, all these small steps, uh, you know, you know, whether there are small successes or even small failures will eventually lead you in, your, in the direction you want to go. Yeah. The least it, it can happen, it, you will grow a lot as a person. Like you will learn a lot from this and you will grow. You will grow much stronger. This at least what happens yeah. with me. But it's not it's not about just you and me, correct? It's 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 about trying to help others grow. And I think it once we go beyond I mean, of course you have to first start one think of oneself, correct? I want to grow. I want to flourish, I want to improve. Yeah. But then what? You know, unless this it transforms into I want others to grow, I want others to flourish, I want others to be to be to be seen, to be known. Then it becomes something. Then it becomes beyond the personal endeavor. Yeah, of course. Uh, I don't think you can genuinely help someone if you cannot help yourself. So growing yourself Absolutely. and uh, trying to help others, like uh, um, we grow, like for me at least, I grow most when I do something for someone Absolutely. Uh, without getting paid for it. When I do a, a nice gesture or something, that is the most accomplishing thing. Like uh, I, I feel best when that happens. So yeah, we, we get to a personal development podcast now. So let's get to back to BIM a little bit. It's the same. It's the same. <laughs> it's no, no. If you change any any topic, okay, whether it is digital transformation, whether it's cooking, whether it is you name it, okay, it's the same drivers, the same personal traits. Uh, in the in one of the frameworks, these are called core competencies, okay? Behavi behavioral aspects that we need to understand. So even if you want to motivate someone to adopt BIM or digital transformation tools and processes, one needs to understand these drivers. You can't, you can't and, and this is part of the work, uh, you know, I, I do in competency assessment. So unless we understand these drivers, it's not going to work. You can put as as many good tools in front of someone, as many good processes, protocols, etc. Unless you can tap into these core foundational drivers of humans, we're dealing with humans, change and adoption won't happen. So they're not they're related. They are not like a different topic. Yeah. Okay. That's that's good and nice to hear. Yeah. Absolutely. What is BIM? And please close that tab with BIM dictionary. We talk about BIM dictionary afterwards. What is your definition of BIM? What is BIM to you? Yep, it is any any collection of uh, technologies, processes, and protocols uh, to improve uh, design, construction, and operation of assets across their life cycle. So, so you, you you can throw anything at it, okay, and it still sticks. And that's a, intentionally a very broad definition of BIM because uh, the label is not important. What is important is what's common between these labels, whether it's BIM or, uh, you know, uh, you could could, up, you could apply even if you want GIS and PLM and all these other acronyms and VDC and digital twin and whatever, you know, terms people like to use nowadays. It is about the same thing, you know, about how to work collaboratively, use the right tools, you know, optimize your processes, uh, develop and use protocols, etc., in order to improve uh, the built environment. Yeah, that's uh, well on point. What is BIM dictionary? It is it is a, a, a an approach to uh, to first. It has it has multiple levels. Okay, so people see probably one or two levels, but it has multiple levels. The first thing is to to provide a glossary of common terms or terms that people commonly use, okay? So this doesn't mean that the term itself is not formal term. So for example, there are now terms that are part of international standards, but because they're commonly used, we include them, okay? Um, there are common terms not within standards, but they come from research, we also include them. So it's a first point to start learning about BIM. And again, BIM as in a general topic I just mentioned. 
So that's if you want the first level of the dictionary. Come in, learn about this topic from an authority, you know, at most, as much as we could, you know, of well-researched and, and interconnected platform. Start your journey of learning there, okay? And then hopefully uh, you, um, you could go deeper and, and that, then we'll go to the next level of, of the dictionary, okay? Now, so, so that's the first level, the, the glossary. The second level is, and this is what, you know, if, if any of your uh, listeners or viewers have seen our presentation, is about taking it to making it a, a knowledge base, okay? And that's a very big difference. Uh, you, you remember the days of the encyclopedia, you know, uh, I don't know if you had the encyclopedia at home or, you know, whatever. Uh, nowadays, this encyclopedic approach to knowledge has to a degree disappeared. Like it, it you used to, to feel, if you want to learn something and it is, you know, you want to have confidence in it, you used to go and open Encyclopedia Britannica or Americana or Collier or whatever it is, you know, you used to have, you open it and you don't question it too much. Okay. You know, it's there. So many peers, so many experts, you know, have reviewed it and you read it and you take it as a fact. Okay, or at least as a really very close to the fact. Currently in the, on our digital world, we don't have that, okay? Now there's so many sources and resources and, you know, it makes a simple topic complex. So you wanna reduce this complexity by trying as much as possible to bring back this encyclopedic approach by providing a, an online, of course, it's digital, it's interconnected, but as much as we can, um, simplified entries to complex topics that you know, you know, uh, you know, it is authoritative, it is dependable, it is reliable, it is research-based. Doesn't mean we don't make mistakes, but of course we do. But this is the aim of the second level, going to a knowledge base. Okay. I can go more. You know, if the third level is, it's a base. Uh, it's it's our common uh, uh, modular language. If you, you know, in, in our initiative, we have lots of projects and each project will focus on different things. We have macro adoption, you know, about policies. We have one for learning, one for performance improvement within companies, one for integrate information. We need to connect them. And only when having, a, you know, a, a, a dictionary, uh, you know, a glossary, a, a, a reference, which, you know, all projects rely on equally, can we connect these projects together? If there's no dictionary, if there's no glossary, if there's no, you know, this bedrock of foundation, this bedrock foundation of knowledge, these projects will be separate, will go their own way, and they will not benefit each other. So I can go on, but that's the three main reasons why we have the dictionary. Yeah, yeah, it definitely uh, can. Uh, if you don't have a bedrock, like you said, like it's it's confusing. It's confusing and it's, it, it will cause always just discussions. Mm -hmm. What is BIM Excellence Initiative? Yeah, it is again a, a trial. It's it's a it's an approach. It is a commitment. It is passion. It is you can call it whatever you want. Trying to um, do something good in our built environment through the uh, connected effort of people who who think the same way or very similar way. Okay, so I'm trying to bring people who have the same passion, but they are specialists. They're not just have the same, it's not enough to have passion. Okay, it's really good to have passion. And that's really the first ingredient, but you have to be a specialist and you know what you're saying. Okay, you don't have to be the top specialist. You have to be a specialist. Okay, and you have to, we have to have a common mission. Bring these three together. Okay, and add a couple of more ingredients we can discuss. You have a community that has a common goal, a common mission, a common vision, a common set of projects, a common set of protocols to deliver something for the built environment. Now, the initiative, you could describe it in many ways. You could describe it as a community. You could describe it as a knowledge engine because it's, it feeds on knowledge and produces uh, knowledge. You can call it also a network of like-minded people and associations, as you will see as we grow, we're not only connecting people, we're connecting also associations. We already have these connections in some of these projects, but not across all projects. But in, a, in the purest sense of it, it is a, a horizontal 
effort uh, to change the industry or to improve the digitalization of the industry uh, through the collective efforts of uh, individuals and groups. Okay, this sounds so complex. When did you start this? When did you found this? It is, it is complex in a sense that it is not an elevator pitch, okay? But it is a natural progression of someone's individual effort. Like meaning, like you start now a video cast, you succeed, correct? The next step for you is, okay, who's gonna help me with this? Who's gonna help me source the materials? Who's gonna be preparing the interviews? Who's gonna do the editing? Who's gonna do, you know, uh, the working on social media, etc. So even if you're only focusing on a single medium and a single topic, you, if you wanna progress anything, you have to move from an individual effort to a either a team effort, like, you know, like a formal team or a group effort. So the initiative starts, started like a individual effort. But if you want to have uh, more effect on your own, you can do only so much, okay? You can do great, good stuff, but you cannot multiply them, okay? So the initiative is a multiplicative. It, 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 it tries to multiply the efforts of, multi, you know, people. You know, when you put one plus one plus one, it doesn't make them three, it makes them five. When you put one plus 10, it doesn't make them 11, it makes them 20 and 30. So the effort here is to try to multiply the passion and effort of people working together so they can change the industry in their own way. Yeah, this, uh, when I said complex, I was thinking like having this in your mind, on your mind, only you as a person. I guess like the first iteration of this was simpler and maybe you just uh you just grew afterwards right it's actually the opposite the opposite it is opposite it started with complex you know like okay this is a complex problem how can we improve the industry okay because someone said oh, i want to improve the industry they say okay what do you mean you know ah uh, there's so many things to change correct and, and you start thinking, okay, I want to produce learning materials and I want to produce software and I want to produce video casts and podcasts and books and whatever. And it, it, the idea itself becomes like very big and say, how can I change the industry without, without doing all this? So you start with this big idea and say, okay, what is the essence of all this? You know, if I want to do this, all of this, how can I achieve it with minimum effort in a solid, you know, in a way, and you start looking at what's common between all these things you want to do, okay? And you, and in our case, you know, you know, you, you find that knowledge is the essence, of course. That's like a like a general statement, but you can all of them connect them through a skeleton. If you can reduce all this complexity and make it, it's like a six projects rather than hundred projects. If you can make it a couple of uh, you know, models and frameworks rather than being 10 frameworks, then it becomes manageable. So it started with this big, huge, impossible to do to now to becoming a eh, reasonable to understand with maybe three, four hours, you know, of, of you know, discussion. And over a couple of years, if you give it another couple of years, it will be easy to understand with maybe a day, half a day, three hours, two hours, maybe then becomes half a minute. Uh, in, in order to in, uh, to explain what it is yeah of course like uh, it, it was more complex because it was difficult to articulate it and try different things but when, when you get more people to help then you get the chance to from different perspective you get more clarity like yeah this is something palpable we can yeah this can be a project we can do that right I'll give you an example, like, like, like uh, just so that to, like, uh, to uh, exemplify this, this, this notion of from complexity comes simplicity, is uh, we never published uh, the mission or the vision of the initiative. But after these three sessions, the mission, the vision, you know, all these things, we have we had the principles, of course, became clearer, okay? Because you see how people are interacting with each other, and you find the right words to describe what they're doing. And after, after these, uh, you know, our first excellence seminar, which just happened at the end of July, uh, now we have a new page on the initiative website saying mission. 
which wasn't there because it was implicit. Now it became explicit. Now there's something called vision there. Okay, and now the vision and the mission and the goals and the purposes are all connected. And that's a simplification process based on starting with something ambiguous. Yeah, that, uh, by the way, the mission. Uh, what, what is this mission and why do you have it out there? It's for people to adhere to, right? A mission, a mission is like, so people say, what are you all about? And this is difficult for people because people understand uh, what ISO is doing. You know, they understand what Building Smart is doing to a degree. Okay, they understand what these, you know, institutions are doing, but many people don't understand what the initiative is uh, about. And this, our public seminar was our first, you know, public discussion to tell people, you know, this is what we're all about. Our mission is to improve the digital transformation, accelerate the digital transformation of the construction industry or the built environment, okay? That's our mission. But many people could have the same mission. Like you could, there's two, people, could two companies have a mission to go to Mars. Right? Yeah. But they may have very different vision. You know, why, why, why are you going to Mars? You know, some of them want to mine, get the, you know, so the, the minerals, other ones to build the colony, etc. So the mission is clear. We want to accelerate digital transformation. But our vision, okay, is different from others. Okay. Yeah. So we are like others in our mission, but we are very different in our vision. Our vision is to demonstrate different or new ways of thinking about this problem, different and new ways of learning, of researching, okay? And you will see this as we go. We will demonstrate uh, through our collective efforts that, that we can think about these you know, complex problems that we all face in a new way, okay? We will do research in a new way. We will do peer review in a new way. We will publish our results in a new way, okay? We will do everything we could in order to resolve complex problems in a fresh way. That's our vision. Yeah, that sounds very noble and uh, it's very much needed for our industry. So yeah, that's awesome to hear. Yeah, well, it's, it's, again, it's an attempt, okay? We don't know if we're gonna succeed. It doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's the, the, the value is in attempting, correct? And, and, and by putting your mission and vision and, and principles online and you make them public, you, what, what happens? First, people know what you're all about. Either they like it or they don't like it. But the people who like it will, will contact you, you know? They will say, I like what you, you said. I like where you're going, you know? I, I, want, I want to be part of this. I want to improve this. I can do it better. I can help you make it better. So that's a success. And since our, you know, so every time we do something public, you have many, many offers of, of help from people that other than, you know, you know, putting yourself out there, you wouldn't have found them. You wouldn't have known that there's people that think in a way that wows you. That like you look at, oh my God, you know, I thought, I didn't know these people exist. I didn't know that there's this solution or this type of thinking out there. And you can only find them when you put yourself out and they see you, they out themselves for you. They tell you also their own thoughts and uh, their own way of thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, because we, uh, we make an a image of a person after what they do, right? So if you don't do much and I only see you working at your computer, I, know just, I will just know that you work at your computer, right? But if you involved in other things, I'll know, yeah, yeah, that guy is doing that as well. That is something yeah. I, I'm interested in as well. Maybe I can help somehow. So yeah, Correct. that's a brilliant way to approach it. Yeah, yeah, and there's so much talent out there, much more talent than we need to change the industry. The problem is we don't know where they are, okay? And yeah. there's no way of um, making their uh, efforts connected, okay? So this is one reason for the community. You, you, you want to connect these talents and you, you want to put their efforts to good use, okay? And you want to make them multiply when you put two talented people, each talented in, in their own way and make them work together, I can assure you that new ways of thinking will appear. Yeah, amazing things will happen, definitely. And nobody, uh, like not everybody needs to be the icebreaker, the starter, but th there are people that need to see someone doing it. Like many people see, uh, saw you doing this and say, yeah, I, I would not have started that. But I would re definitely try, uh, like, and try to help Bilal in doing this. I maybe I I should shoot him a message and ask him, can I help you somehow or something? 
yeah, yeah, and that's that's exactly what happens, and that's exactly what has been happening ever since uh, this thing started. And and they come to you, and not just me, to everyone, you know, who, who you know have uh, you know do something similar. They come yeah. to you and says, "Have you thought about this solution?" Okay, and like, this happened like two weeks ago. Uh, they're trying to fix a problem with the process engineering that we're doing, and we still haven't really solved it 100 percent. And then someone contacts you and says, have you thought about this way of um, connecting processes? I never heard of this way before. Never heard, you know, I, this is something I, I try to understand. I never heard of this. And because of this discussion following you exposing yourself, you know, saying this is the problem we're facing. This is how we're trying to resolve it and it's not being resolved. Yeah. And they come to you and say, have you thought about this solution? And you kind of say, oh my God, you know, this, this is amazing. This, this will help us. Uh, so the more you expose what you do and the more you expose what you don't know how to do, the more you people will come to you and offer their assistance and their expertise. Yeah. Yeah. Not many people are comfortable to, uh, to let the other know what, what they don't know. You know, this is a very big challenge as well. So yes, the person's challenge. Props to you that you, you, <laughs> you overcome that. Yeah, but it's not, it's 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 something that you train yourself to do. Of course, you know it's and this is this is a, typically the message for young researchers. You know, it's, you know, don't worry too much about doing you know problem your mistakes, etc. Okay, you you have to do. You have to you know put yourself out there. You have to expose how you think in order to attract uh, you know criticism, to attract uh, you know improvement suggestions. Just imagine if. If we're all afraid of criticism or review, you know, if, you, if you're afraid of somebody reviewing your work and telling you what you've done wrong, nobody would publish a paper, you know, nobody would, there was, there was no, there was, nobody would share anything. So you have to open yourself to, to, um, to criticism. And that's why we encourage everyone to be, to think like a researcher and the researcher need to, you know, understand um, that their work is true or correct, but it could be proven wrong. Okay. And but it also could be wrong and could be improved so it becomes correct and true. Yeah, this uh, this is uh, this is really amazing things uh, unraveling here. So yeah, I'm I'm really glad to witness this. So yeah, thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you a lot. When you like to be motivated to 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 start moving towards this direction, like to to found something of this magnitude you need to be to have some big pains like you see some big really big problems in our industry that you 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 have been you have become frustrated with what is what are the challenges what is happening in our industry why why did uh, it was necessary to to do something regarding this yeah, the frustrating thing is not there are big problems. It's always going to be big problems. This is not the issue. The, the, the problem, the main frustration is that people don't learn from, from, from solutions. So you'll find lots of these problems. Somebody found a solution and then someone else uh, don't know about that solution. They repeat the same mistake. Nobody learns. Uh, the frustration is, again, it's not about having a problem at all the frustration is why aren't we learning from mistakes and this is the typical thing that when people compare the construction industry or the built environment real estate industry with other industries like aerospace you know is that one major thing other than the supply chain issue is that they learn from every mistake every mistake which is a catastrophe you know makes the next plane the next car better Okay, and they share that knowledge. That knowledge is shared across the industry so that nobody does this mistake again. We don't have that in our industry. Yeah, but then, then you have the problem, like the lack of cooperation. Yeah, lack of cooperation, lack of knowledge sharing, I call it. Yeah, I, don't, I don't care about cooperation. I care about knowledge sharing. You know, you could knowledge share. You, could, you know, if people share their knowledge, and, uh, you know, you know in, a, in an open way, yeah. and let others learn from their mistakes and from their lessons they don't need to cooperate just share share make it open make what you do available to others 
You don't have to teach them. You don't have to cooperate with them. You don't have to talk to them. Just make it available to them to learn on their own and you will do good. Uh, that mindset, it's so remote. At least it has been so remote in our industry because, uh, yeah, it's like nobody wants to do that. They just want to grow themselves. Yep. And and some you know there's multiple reasons for that you know some psychological issues which we're not expert in you know people are about afraid of stating uh, you know what they think fearing that others would not accept it uh, you know there's commercial interest you know locked behind copyright to, you know walls and and etc cetera, etc cetera. and there's the you know disintegration of our supply chain there is our adversarial contractual environment there's so many issues but we should not focus on these these are not not helpful to focus on what we need to think okay what is the thing that we can all focus on and we can all improve without necessarily changing all these difficult things we cannot we cannot change the contracts we cannot change the insurance uh you know uh, the, the way insurance is handled in, a, in our industry we, what we can change is making knowledge more accessible making it more uh, uh, understandable uh, and building communities that learn from each other. That's what we can change. So we should really focus on what we can change. What kind of, can you give some examples of uh, some kind of things or uh, material uh, companies could share? Yeah, anything that you see in the initiative, uh, you know, bemexens.org, uh, we have... Um, you know, have multiple projects and we, we the way we share things are either as a, like a downloadable resource, like a, a list of things, uh, and I'll explain what these are, a decision support template, like a matrix, like you can read on your own and say, okay, this is where I we are at a company and this is, if we want to improve, we need to do these steps. So this is like a self-help uh, for performance. Uh, online tools like the dictionary, so you can search uh for for knowledge but soon you will search also for software tools and see what they do compared to specific information users etc so the type of research that we do is we provide uh building blocks for people to build their own knowledge so we don't we don't we don't give them ready to eat food okay it's not like uh i want a pizza you know come get pizza the knowledge pizza from the initiative we don't have that what we have is the ingredients, like a good ingredients for you to do your own pizza, okay? So you wanna build an assessment tool, you wanna build a learning uh, program, the initiative will help you, provide you with building blocks for you to build a training program, but we're not gonna give you one. You have to build it yourself, but we're gonna give you the ingredients. Yeah. Um, it's like, a, like, a, like if you think of some, you know, someone building a house, okay? There's different tools to build a house, you know, the drill and I don't know what, all these machines, okay? But all of them need capacitors. All of them may need batteries. All of them need certain types of motors. We want to be the, the community that produces these common ingredients, okay? For people to build their own tools, to build their own houses. Yeah. You want people to learn how to fish, not to give them the fish. You, you, there Absolutely. Is this, this quote, right? Uh, learn a man to fish and he will have something to eat for the entire, for the rest of his life. Absolutely, that's that's a great analogy, and yes, very similar uh, to what you just mentioned. And and this is and and uh, this is why it makes it a little bit difficult for some people at, at the start. It's now it's no longer the case to understand what we're trying to do. You say, ah, uh, give me give me a training program. Can I download a training program for my company or from for my university or whatever? Say so, no, you can't. You need to put in the effort. You have to put in, the, yeah, you have to, to build it your own. We could provide guides or templates, like, you know, for you to help you to do that, but that's it. We're not going to give you something ready made for you, okay? And even if we did, it would be just as a template. Say, like, I can give you an example. Um, like, uh, we have a project called, uh, und, und, we have a project called Project F, which is Integrated Information Project. Um one of its micro projects is called F2 Model Use Template. Model Use Template is all about generating a template for people to use or to change to improve their processes. So we have one, you know, if you go to crash detection on the BIM dictionary, you'll find there's a template. Like uh, what are the steps, like major activities you have to complete. The way you provide it, we say this is it, it, the minimum needed 
activities you need, okay? So this is like, if you wanna think about flash detection, these are the activities you need to, to know. But if you click on it, you, it will open up as a copy for you, okay? You can change it for your own company, for your own you know, type of project. So we'll provide you with a, with a template which would work on, like let's say majority of projects, but it's a template for you to change and we encourage you to change it. And that's the whole purpose behind it. Yeah, but it's providing a good starting point. Yes, only a starting point. Yeah, no, uh, but that's good because uh, uh, most of the time I think it's very difficult to start. If you have that starting point, you, you can build uh, onto, right? Yes, yes, it's a community. Yeah, it's, it's about starting points. And once you give someone a starting point, you never know what comes out of it. You, they could do something much better if, than, than if you gave them the full thing. This is my problem with standardization in general. They give you the, like, a, a, this, is, this is the truth, you know? This is, oh, this is, a, they call it a, a standard or, or you know, they, they say as if it's a guide, but it's done in a way as if it's a finished thing. I mean, if you, if you have to abide by the standard, you know, by, you know, by the letter of the standard, it's a finished product. You know, everything is named, everything is connected, everything is already pre-cooked for you. That's not helpful. You know, it could be helpful for a small percentage of situations, but what about the, the 99% of situations which do not look like what you've just written? What do you do with these? Yeah, and, and we, sh we should always embed variability in the work we do. Like, uh, you cannot say, this is the only way to work. That's wrong. I mean, the way, no matter how perfect it is, okay, it's wrong. It's just plain wrong because things change faster than what you can change in your template, okay? And we are all one community across the world, okay? We have very similar problems, but their localization is different, okay? When, when you try to do the same project in two different countries, you know, one in Norway, one in Romania, and one you know, here in Australia, if you want to build exactly the same house, it's not going to be the same. Do we have anything, any other challenges than transparency? Um, well, I don't think it's issue of transparency. Again, or sharing, sharing. I'm sorry, sharing the sharing willingness. People are willing to share. This is not a problem. It's just there's no medium for sharing. There is no incentive for sharing. Okay, uh, the people who share share individually. You know, people who write blogs. They, they may write free books. You know, uh, but. There's no no common thread connecting them. No central or uh, yeah central database or something. N nothing is feeding out of you know you know I'm not I'm not saying that everyone needs to think the same way or need to be like uh, integrated. No, this is impossible. But we need to encourage you know to create a kind of thinking that sharing is is really gold. Okay. One of the ideas, one of the ideas which we never actualized in the initiative is to create something like a new metric called KSI or, or a key sharing index. Okay. Yeah. One day maybe we should do it. Like instead of KPIs, we look at how, you know, how much knowledge does a, a, a company shares or institution shares. Okay. And, and sharing means open not for, for fee and it's not copyrighted. That's what you really sharing. Open source. Sharing. Yeah, it doesn't have to be open source. It has to be open access. Meaning there's a bit different, I mean, it's open. It should be open, okay? Yeah. Meaning if we if we rated you companies and it, it was like if somebody adopted a metric like this saying this company you want to you know, work with has a very low uh, key sharing index. They don't share anything. And anything they generate as an innovation, they keep it for themselves, okay? And this other company has a really great, you know, a key sharing uh, index. They are good uh, community players. They are good uh, environmental players. They are good society, you know, you, know, you know, society members, okay? We want to encourage sharing, okay? And the way you encourage sharing is by taking the first step. You share. And then you expect people to share. You can't go and ask people, why don't you share your knowledge? Say, why should I share my knowledge? Uh, you know, it's my knowledge. Say, so, okay, you make, you know, make an effort. This may work, may not work, but you share knowledge and share more and keep sharing until others see the value of sharing and start sharing as well. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's, 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 you have to do it. You have, look, look what we're up against. We're up against people who have lots of knowledge and have copyrighted it. Okay, yeah. even, even if it's public good. It's yeah. public good and they still lock it behind copyright, uh, you know, copyrighted materials or we have to pay for it. How is it logical? So how can we improve as an industry if everything we learn or is, whether it's an innovation or a small technique or a practice and, and we keep it to ourselves and we lock it? You know, if, if, if this happens in the, in the you know, aerospace industry, in, in, you, know, when, you know, how many planes will, will, will fall out of the sky? Because what Airbus learned didn't share with uh, Boeing or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, or uh, even IT industry, right? Like the open source community. Like Yeah, look at beautiful. I mean, look at the open source communities in, 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 in software engineering. Amazing. You know, how many open software tools we use nowadays or we benefit from, okay? But when it comes to knowledge sharing, you know, there's no mechanisms, there's no incentives, and there's no examples of good knowledge sharing, at least in our industry. You know, we're not saying we're able to change that overnight. It's just we have to give a good example. Yeah. Are there other key points we should focus on aside of sharing? Do Are there other things we, we should get better at? Yeah, I, mean, I, I think there's a, a, the research is really undervalued in our um, community. You know, in, people don't look, uh, on, you know, uh, trying to understand the strengths and weaknesses of knowledge generated in academia versus what's generated in practice. You don't understand how complementary these are. I mean, currently they operate as if they're in very different worlds, you know? They, like uh, this is academic and this is industry. Uh, this is what uh, we do at practice and these people are living in their you know, ivory towers doing whatever. And in, in many cases, it's true. So we have to find a way and there is ways to bridge that, to make the interaction between academia, you know, research, like uh, the professional academic, you know, people who are focusing on, they do research for a living, let's say, and people who are in practice. And the only way, uh, one way is we, we, can, we can do that is by uh, changing our language a bit to start with and mixing them together very nicely, okay? And, um, and this is what we do with the initiative. All of us are researchers, whether we come from academia or we come from industry. Why? Because we apply very specific methods in, in, in delivering and developing and sharing knowledge and we get with lots of rigor behind what we do. That's good. Let's talk a little bit about um, the projects of BIM Excellence. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, what, do you, what do you want to know? Tell me what, what are the, all these letters? Project A, B, C, D? Yep. Yep, yep. So uh, we have six projects, top level projects. So these, we don't intend to make them seven at the moment. There's no reason for it. And the, 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 the first one is the dictionary, which is the foundations. The second one is the knowledge organization and sharing. And this is, you know, if, if it's the one that connects uh, the knowledge of all projects, but they have their own, they, it, why, why it's a project? Because they need specific skills. Like, people who generate something called ontologies, okay, and taxonomies and lists, and they have very different skills for people who, who uh, you know, I don't know, uh, develop software, let's say, okay? And so that, that, that project is all about knowledge generation and sharing. And so, for example, seminars are part of project B. This is the knowledge, uh, the blogs, the, if we write books, et cetera. Now, this, the third one, project C, is about competency and learning. We haven't launched that yet, but it's about uh, a new way of thinking about competency assessment, competency-based learning. We haven't launched it, so we can't really discuss it too much. Project D also not, not, not launched, but it's about improving performance within a company. So what are you know, um, the specific steps that you know, a company will, we can take? Uh, how can it assess itself, improve its own performance? We have a, a couple of resources for that, like, um, capability, maturity assessment, et cetera. Project E and F are launched. So project um, E is about macro adoption. So we try to understand what policymakers across the world are doing. You know, what are the policies they're generating? What are the roadmaps? How they are incentivizing digital transformation? Meaning some countries, for example, spend money on training, some kind, you know, um, 
countries spend money on um, you know incentivizing uh, software purchases or hardware so mm -hmm. try to capture what they're doing and also to uh, put it back to the industry saying these are you know the, you know when we deliver our report um, these are the best actions a policymaker can take in order to encourage digital transformation okay this is one of the deliverables of this project and the last project which is about integrated information we're trying to find a way to bypass our uh, uh, this integrated supply chain, you know, you know, in construction, limited supply chain, yeah. We, it's it's disintegrated. Like like every project is a is has a different supply chain, and there is no connection of the information flow between them. So that this project is trying to has a framework as well, trying to say, okay, how can we think about information flow across industry in a new way, and based on that, we want to help people to develop online platforms that they can use from the start of the project till the across the whole life cycle of an asset so our our job here is to enable the development of online platforms for information management for this is for that project now these six projects are they look different may even feel different but they're not they are they are interconnected together not just through the, the dictionary not just because it, it, the knowledge structure is the same, not just because they all have a learning component, not because they're all intended to improve the performance of organizations and individuals. Everything in the, in the, in the initiative is interconnected, but we have these projects separated like that because each project will need different talents to execute it successfully. Yeah. This definitely requires a lot of efforts and uh, resources. No. 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 It's <laughs> not. It's not about. I don't. I don't think. Time. I mean time. <laughs> yes. Yeah, look, it needs passion. Okay. It needs passion. It needs effort. Consistent effort. Okay. Yeah. But everything worth doing is the same. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. There's not. There's not. I mean, I, I, unless it's worth doing, uh, really, we should should not do it and and it's worth doing and it will take effort and will take lots of people and we need to organize these people to work together correct and we need to deliver but it it is doing some good hopefully and we see you know whether we succeed in our mission and and we demonstrate our vision we'll see but it's uh, the journey on its own is enjoyable so i think as long as uh, you will continue doing this you already succeeded from my point of view like uh, the the ice is broken now yeah yeah it's a, it's a small small it's a small initiative trying to encourage people to do other initiatives and as we grow we want to connect with other people who are doing the same thing or better and try to work with them and try to find common ways of doing multiplying our efforts okay so it's it is not like you you do something and you expect results tomorrow no no this is it's, no it's it, you have anything worth planning you know it should take years of hard work. I don't believe in quick like, uh, solutions for the industry. What's a, what's a quick solution for the industry? There's no quick solution. There are only hard work, persistent work, interconnected work, uh, work based on research, work based you know, work with passionate people over a long period of time in order to, to, to make change. Yeah. If we discuss a little bit about uh, the project regarding assessing the the different levels around the world uh, do you have uh, did i understood correctly do you have a document like uh, can be shared uh, regarding this the status around the world uh, no we don't i don't think we're going to produce one that is permanent we probably will produce one which is just a snapshot because these things change, you know, you know, it change very quickly, even within a single country. What would the, the, the better value, you know, a proposition, better way of doing things is not to focus on just taking pictures. Okay, so we have to take pictures. Uh, what does this country is doing? What are the other countries doing? Are they improving? Not improving? And we've done this work since 2005. Okay, it has certain value, but it has very short, what's called shelf life. You know, just gets rotten really quickly, becomes not tasty at all after you know a couple of years. A better value proposition would be to understand what are the actions taken by different policymakers which succeeded. Yeah, that work. 
yeah, so some countries did uh, a mandate that says you have to do it or we're not going to work with you. Others spent money on training, others on provide, you know, incentives through the tax system, others focus on education, others were led by, by an association, others were led by government, etc. All these different, you know, tens of metrics or indices or indicators. Um, once we understand the formula for um, not, not assured success, but for improvement, we want to share that formula. We want to say, your best chance of encouraging your industry, whether it's in Norway or Australia or, or you know, Romania or you know, Sweden, whatever, whatever, the best formula forward would be to have some kind of combination of these approaches, which, and, and, and this is our data to prove it, you know? I understand, but when you share this, you need to have someone that is receptive to this, that wants to listen to this. That doesn't think that, yeah, I don't... Where does this come from, Petro? There's many people who listen. It doesn't matter if they tell you they're listening, okay? You know, it's not like we searching for people who say, oh, I'm listening to you and I believe what you said. These people are, either they're lying to you, okay? Or they, or, or they haven't understood you, okay? This is not the people you're going to be searching for. You're searching for people who don't tell you that they're listening to you, okay? They, they look at, listen, at, at what you're saying, they they take what you offered, they implement it, and they may never tell you that they've implemented it. Okay, we don't care. It, it's it's either you want to help people to improve, or you want people to tell you you help me to improve. Okay, it, it, it's nice if people tell you because you know that's great, but that's not the intention. The intention is to provide something, some tool, some resource for people to improve, even if they don't tell you or they appear as if they're not listening. And, and trust me, based on what we know, many, many people listen, they don't tell you what they listen. And then you learn after a while that they have been adopting this recommendation here and there. And that's really the, the effect you want. You want people to own it, deploy it, improve. It doesn't matter if they tell you if they, they did. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, but uh, I, I was mostly thinking about there are definitely countries where BIM is not a hot topic. There are countries around the world where people don't think about BIM. That, that, yep. This is my concern. Uh, and when I say people, if you have companies that are not concerned about this, the legislators, the government is even more uh, less educated regarding this, right? So how, how do you make this working? You have two options. You are, either you have to focus on people who, who tell you, I'm not going to listen, and you're sure you're not going to listen, or you focus your energy on people who said, uh, or show you, or appear to, they're going to listen and they're going to benefit from what you do. Look, you, you can never uh, influence everyone, and you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't try even, okay? Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, one should focus on uh, the people who want and will, will benefit from uh, any assistance they get in order to improve their personal or their, their company's or their market's uh, performance. If, if there is, and this, this is true anywhere, here in Australia and, you know, there are companies and individuals who will never improve what they do, never, ever, okay? It's just, they, they're averse to change. We, we should not focus on these people, okay? It's just a waste of energy, waste of yeah. time. We should focus on people who are willing to change, but need a starting point. Okay, yeah. help these. Okay, help these. You know, they will become leaders, and others will follow them. Exactly, and the resources will be there for the other more stubborn ones as well, if they want to to take that. Doesn't matter if everyone listens or not. This is not. It's the world is big. We are in the biggest industry in, in the world. Okay, eventually, anything you of benefit you say or do, someone will benefit from. Okay, you don't have, you, you may not see them. Okay, but they're there. That's a good uh, good perspective. Yeah, don't, don't expect results. Yeah, you know, it's just one one should not expect uh, to see success. I mean, one would like to see it, but one should work because the work is good and it's you know, on its own. Yeah. Do you have any? Um... 
indexes or, or any can you share any information regarding this do you have any countries that you think could be good examples uh, for for the other ones or it's wrong to think about countries it is not wrong it's just not accurate uh you a country is not some small thing correct a country is made of companies of regions of disciplines of geography of geopolitics so really comparing countries is a fool's game really it's not useful at all you know comparing a same country over 10 years is not useful even you know it's not useful we could compare specific things okay like we say let's compare the digitalization of the hospitality uh, sector in uh, your city with the hospitality sector in my city okay that's useful okay if we want to learn from each other so you, you compare it find that in your city you do it better say how what are they doing better we learn you know the things that can be learned but generically to say finland and and norway are better from netherlands and germany better in what okay what are you measuring and when did you do this measurement and how what's the shelf life of that measurement we should look at success and try to understand its ingredients look at these ingredients collate them and give them to someone else yeah i think i think uh, when we think like countries we think more like entities like the the wholesome aspect right how how the government or the state agency work together with companies and how this uh this the entire supply chain is working together maybe from this point of view because, because this differs like yeah that's good from country that's a good country. aspect yeah you say for example this metric is beautiful like you said the extent of uh you know cross departmental or uh, you know across different players co collaboration to generate uh you know a guide or to generate a roadmap we could measure that okay we could say look at their roadmap when the government works with the private sector you look at it and you compare it with the roadmap done only by government or only by the private sector this is comparable you so and you can see like in this one is more coverage here it's more specialized etc so we could describe them so when we compare them in in a way that is research driven like have this kind of uh, reliability kind of rigor in your comparisons then we can get benefits out of them but to say uh this country is better than the country in adoption say what are you talking about you know and this is a common mistake how oh, we want to be like that country why do you want to be like that country first you don't have their history you don't have their infrastructure you don't have their legal framework you don't have anything similar to them why do you want to copy them yeah that's true uh when, when you say when you put it this way there is a thing coming to my mind right away for example like uh from a very practical point of view like not using drawings anymore like i see this uh a trend in norway i see there there are there are more and more projects where there are not used drawings anymore the, uh, people are working only with the 3d model and this mm -hmm. this Uh, how how would you see that wouldn't that be uh, something like yeah like if you do that would help you like we'll get all like that means that you no. as a uh, stakeholders different stakeholders you work better or uh, and you you work more effectively or we cannot compare things like that as well we have to compare them against uh, the what is expected uh, use back like meaning you can tell me if Uh, and this is really the behind one of the resources in the initiative we have something called information use model use data use document use okay so you have to define first the purpose of what you're delivering you know what are you delivering it okay then you say you go to information user say i want cost estimation for this house okay i want cost estimation at early you know design phase and i want another cost estimation you know just before construction and etc okay if you can do it better and faster by hand you should do it by hand okay if you can do it better and faster through a 3d model do it by 3d model if you can use some kind of fancy other solutions which doesn't include any modeling or any documentation it's done by by an autonomous robot for example do it 
the, the, the general idea is we should not focus too much on the tool or the medium. We should focus on the outcome. The, you know, it should be outcome based. Okay, and whatever we do to get to that outcome more accurately, more repetitively, in a, in a way that reduces, uh, you know, carbon footprint, etc., we should do it. This this approach saying oh, everything should be modeled that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Okay, we, yeah, because sometimes modeling is is the least efficient way of doing something. Some things could be done just through data transfer, without three D models. <laughs> yeah 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 but no i'm just thinking like what is the current state like now we based everything on drawings right this is how we work everywhere like you you are required drawings and documentation to for everything to get any permit to for insurance for everything right so i'm thinking only regarding what is the next step most uh more, more efficient step from our status right now historically if historically like if you want to look at like big projects who have implemented digital digital flows and digitalization if you want uh, you know uh, approaches there's a typical typical you know uh, kind of curve you see okay um we, we could say it holds true but we were not sure we don't have the data but typically you go from a 2d based uh, flow like based on drawings and then as you digitally mature you start using models and you get 2d drawings out of models and you do simulation and cost estimation etc out of models i'm, I'm discussing like a reasonable size pro you know buildings or facilities. And then over time, the percentage of modeling versus data exchange uh, drops. So, 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 so it, go, it starts with drawings, goes with modeling goes up and then modeling drops and then there's data exchanges more, but the documents stay the same. So this is kind of a trend if you wish, depending on your digital maturity and whether we're discussing an integrated supply chain, et cetera, you will see these trends on how the percentage of information exchange by different representation types. So percentage as document, percentage as models, percentage as just data sets. Yeah, I, I, I think I, before we get to this uh, data flow between everything, because there you need mostly robots to do the work. I think as long as you will have people mostly involved in this, we need the 3D representation would be the most intuitive way to, to see and understand how we do things like to, to go purely to data. How, uh, if you work only with people, how do you make that understandable? Yeah, the certain things that people need to understand and parse So three, and this is really actually a, an argument against what you said. If we are trying to simplify for people for the sake of people only, rather than for efficiency, then we are losing efficiency. Meaning if something can be done with data only without models, let's do it. If things need people to parse and to simulate, and then we have to model for them. But this modeling for them is a modeling for them. It is a lack of efficiency. Okay, so sometimes modeling is an efficient approach, and sometimes when you, you mature you know, as a process, okay, it's a lack of efficiency when you continuously model when something you can do without modeling. It, there's nothing absolute, okay, there's nothing that say we have to all model everything. Not true. Okay? That's interesting, and uh, it's new, it's a new perspective. Uh, but like you said, like, I'm still thinking about this, we still don't have the, the means to execute just using the data. So, yeah, not entirely, not entirely at least. Not entirely, not entirely. And we shouldn't think of a process like it's a, it's a huge process, okay? We, we Every process has sub-processes and every activity has sub-activities and tasks and etc. As we, and this is part of the maturity process, in, you, know, you know, process maturity, not just technological maturity. As we go forward with that, we'll be able to separate things that could be optimized without models, okay? And separate things that can only be optimized through models, okay? Yeah. And, and the things that work beautifully through 2D documentation and should stay in 2D documentation, we'll be able to isolate them. Uh, the lack of maturity makes us jumble all these things together and think of it as a linear way. Like uh, we have to go from 2D documents to models and then after, you know, people reach Venus and live on Venus and how, then we can go to that. No, it's not the case. We could separate certain things for different types of information flow. Yeah, maybe this is a little bit uh, uh, more, uh, more uh, natural for people to understand to view it this way. 
I don't think there are many people seeing the things how you see it, like thinking most, uh, or, or mostly on the, the the biggest value, like going straight forward, burn the the era you live in, like the this struggle. Because I see this happening. Everybody tries this to ditch drawings to go this, but the, people de just think to the closest next the the next closest uh, objective, right? They don't think like to to uh, burn. Uh, 10, uh, 10 steps and go straight in the future uh, for many reasons there is no competency for that there are not budgets for that and and yeah uh, many others right and, and pe people also um, don't not also people I mean some people don't think of the end result they they are too focused on the next step rather than and this is, this is based on our education, to be to be honest. I Meaning, most of us have been educated in typical schools. We 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 have uh, we have a tendency to think that there's a proper way of doing things, okay? And there's this, you know we have to follow procedures and you know stand in line and sit in a certain way and ask in a certain way, rather than look at the the end objective and try to find what is the best way, the most optimal way to reach that objective. Um, so, so these things are beyond our digital transformation. It is more about our human behaviors. Um, you see, if we, we went full circle, we started with behaviors, we're back to behaviors. Okay, we need to to when we're discussing digital transformation, we we need at least this is to encourage people to do to think of outputs and outcomes they're trying to achieve, and the next step to look at the process to achieve them, and the next step would be the technologies and tools needed for that process i feel i think until we we get educated to have this mindset is going to be very difficult to do it from a from a job perspective from a job role it's you you won't do it you you just need to finish your tasks you have tasks right you don't have yeah. time to think and apply it in your in your project most i think well some people some people do have time yeah and some people make time and some people do incremental improvements. We, we, it's not. This is not about changing everything one does, like in a disruptive way. This stuff doesn't work. Okay. Yeah. It is. It's very rare to have something disruptive happens and changes the industry. It's this is like you need a very traumatic, you know, something really big. We, it's our our better better approach would be to for incremental improvement. Okay continuously improving our definition of our processes, allowing people to redefine them, okay? Help people to manage these processes in a better way through education and through tools like uh, for, for manage information and then slowly integrate these processes and optimize them. So there is, there is an, a better way which says, if we cannot change everything, we should change something. Yeah. And we do it in small steps and every day and every week and every month, we improve small things. And how do you do it? You can only do it when you know what your current process is. You know, you know what you're doing. Like you, you map what you're doing. You say, this is how I currently do my work. And you know what kind of output you want in the future. And then you modify your current process slowly, step by step. You change an activity here. You change a tool here. You remove a step here. You add a step there, whatever, until you improve your process to reach your goal. It's, it's incremental. Yeah. Yeah, it's incremental if you know what you should go about. Like, what you tell me, what you told me, it's new. I, you, I just found out now. I, I did not have this, uh, this, uh, this thought. I was not thinking this way. I was thinking just to, to the next, next action, next uh, logical step, right? So nobody, I, I never heard this to anybody else. So how do you get uh, more of this? You do video casts like you do. So, so like, this is exactly what you're doing, correct? You are trying to discuss new ways of thinking, or at least you know common practices, best practices in some cases, uh, different thoughts, different people, making their thoughts exposed to others. Others will, will listen, they disagree, they agree, you could have other thoughts, but at least uh, you are contributing to change. Correct, like by 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 sharing knowledge. I hope so. Yeah, I think like uh, isn't there? Don't you have any mastermind group in your uh, in this initiative where when you have some meetings just 
or some people you talk just about rambling about this kind of crazy yes, uh, of possibilities? It doesn't have to be inside the community, but of course inside the community you have lots of great, great, great minds. But sometimes you could get a good thought by discussing this with you know any any idea with anyone, correct? It just um, and uh, look, this is a more general thought. Okay, you may agree, may disagree, uh, but you cannot discuss everything with everyone. And the same, this is the same too for every, you know anyone. But the certain things you discuss with certain person or people and the other things you discuss with other persons and people. Now, the trick is to identify which topics suit this discussion with that person, what this person could give add value to you and what topic, meaning you have to identify this push and pull between you and other people. So if you're in a community, the push and pull is, is typically the, the bigger the community, the, the less depth you, you could go into because you have to keep it at a general level. In small groups, and this is also one of the things why we have tens, if not hundreds in the future of micro projects. So, so we subdivide our projects into, the, the moment it grows, it subdivides into um, something called micro projects and then work packages. The, the moment a work package has two people it becomes a micro project. It's like an organic way. There's many reasons for this, but one of the reasons is uh, you cannot go into depth even in a big community, if you are working as a big community, it, it may sound contradictory. No, no, no. Certain, yeah. Okay. For certain, so you have to keep that granularity. You have to be, go big because your cumulative action can only be, you know, multiplicative if you are a certain size and more. Yeah. But you can only go to specific depth. So if you want quantity versus depth, if you want. If you keep your mechanisms of interaction, of discussion, of investigation in a small component size, which allow you to move quickly and deeply. Yeah, more concise. Okay. Yeah, it would be very difficult because uh, the bigger it is, it, it would be more difficult to manage it because of the noise. It's just going to be unmanageable. It's... Yeah, you, you, you know the story about, uh, the, you know, the, if you want people to organize chairs in a room, you know what, you know, like have 20 chairs. If you ask one person, it could take them five minutes. You ask two people, it becomes two and a half minutes or two minutes. But the more you add people, there's a point where yeah. the efficiency drops. Correct? Exactly. Yeah. Same, same with anything. Same with the community work. There's a certain point. We don't know what it is for specific projects. Okay. It's just more trying and error. Where we reach that saturation point where you subdivide. Okay, yeah. and you need to have that as a as a plus. You have to consider it a plus. You have to work as if it's a plus. It, it you have to target it in your structures to allow it to happen, rather than because if you don't, you will grow to become a big thing with a chapter here and chapter there, and uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, a senior uh, CEO and sub senior. I don't know what it is. You know, it's, you lose this dynamism. And this is true with for knowledge as well. You know, certain topics of knowledge can only be explored at depth between two people, three people maximum, maybe. Okay. Uh -huh. Yep. Yeah. Depending, depending on the topic, correct? And for certain topics, you need a workshop or a focus group. Yeah. For certain topics that need multiple minds, you know, work together, and each of them have their own specialty, you could put eight people, ten people. Okay. The, but if you go to grow it more than that then you are not really searching for new knowledge. You are, you are really searching for a common motivation. You are trying to instigate action. We have a different, different dynamic. Yeah, definitely. How many people are involved with the BIM Excellence Initiative? Yeah, we have uh, currently, I don't know. It's 132? 130 and, well, yeah, 130, 140, because we had a few people join us in the past couple of uh, weeks, which are not, weren't counted in our uh, you know, official number. Uh, but uh, they work in, they have different hats. So most of them would work in the dictionary because that's our foundational project. So, but they will work, they will have another hat in a different project. So there's lots of overlaps and this is intentional as well. Um, so, and this is this is part of one of the projects of how to keep these projects interconnected. One of the when the techniques used is is to put the same person on at least two projects, now, even if small micro projects, to keep this meshing. We call it meshing. Yeah. Okay. 
Yep. So so now when we say we're gonna grow, we're not gonna grow to become you know twenty thousand. That's useless from for the current uh, vision mission we follow. We it's more about going to one sixty, maybe two hundred. Okay. But only we do that when there is a reason for that subdivision. You know, when there is a skill that we don't have, like video casting, right? Or yep, yep. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, or or like uh, we need a system system uh, analyst for some kind of project. Then great, or we need a community coordinator, or we need someone to help us to get sponsors. Okay. Yeah. So then that growth is uh, out of justification. We don't want you don't want to just grow because you want your community to be a thousand people. What's the what's the benefit of that? You know. Yeah, you want to use these resources, like the, everybody's efforts to do something. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say use. I would say provide the right connection between people because every person comes. If there, there's no connecting point to other people, yeah. then this person, he or she, will be uh, preventing others from moving forward. Yeah. Right? Because this is what we discussed about the example of adding more people than the, what the task needs. So that's why our growth is measured and we only open up vacancies so we, we, as if you're a company we, we recruit people i see now when i said used there was no negative connotation just yeah like yeah, yeah. To, I'm, to, I'm, I'm just saying i'm just just to, to be <laughs> to be uh, try to be as uh, you know, try to be correct uh, or accurate in the in the use of political uh, correct yeah <laughs> no, no, so, i don't i don't like political correctness it's just uh, it's, it's not that we of course we all use each other you know in uh, yeah but the idea here is more about uh proper connection if you think of the community as a node and link mesh exactly like a net you know yeah every every knot is connected to multiple uh, you know nodes, nodes. it's a 3d yeah, yeah yes. it's 3d yeah, and you see, you want you don't want to introduce new knots unless you, their connections are clear, and that you know each one benefits the other rather than uh, making their life uh, making their productivity lower. Let's say. Yeah, I understand. So you are saying that um, if somebody wants wants to get involved, how how can somebody contribute if they don't? there are no positions is there any way other people can contribute to this yeah they have to first they have to reach out okay and they have to find a fit meaning and this is this is one of the things in the community the more it grows the harder it's going to be to bring in more people in okay we we want to grow at this and we we are growing um we have a common knowledge okay and we have a number of projects. Our growth is dependent on subdividing the projects into micro projects where it's needed. So when the project is subdivided into micro projects, there's a need to bring people to work on that micro project. Okay. So that's a growth opportunity. So that's if you want a natural way to grow. Another one is we have specific things we're trying to achieve from a knowledge perspective. And when we find a gap, we will advertise it. Okay. So there's two ways. Either a project leader say, I cannot do it on my own. I need help. Okay. And then we ask this project leader, what kind of help do you need? Say, okay, I need this type of help. Can you get, can you source it from your community? No, I cannot source it from your community. Okay. Let's, let's go and get them. That's, because there's so many people out there yeah. that, are, that uh, you know, are keen to help. Another one is we couldn't, we, we, we really couldn't find them through our network, like our, our uh, network. We will advertise it, and you will see this on September 15th when we open up our next cycle. We have cycles of recruitment. We say we are looking for this specific set of competencies. If you find yourself able to do it, please apply. Okay, and it will be vetted, and then you know interview and all these other things that any company would do, but we do it for a community. Why? Because again, don't care about being big. We want um, we want to attract talent. We want to to make sure that the next resource we produce is better than the resource we produced before. So, so there is there is an openness to the recruitment based on competence. It's not open in a sense that whoever wants to join can just pay a fee and come in. It's, it's not, not going to be the case. But that is valid for the mission, right? Who feels that has uh, aligns his vision with the mission can can join there and that can be like a 
amount of people. I, I tell you what, meter. what happens is typically these two ways, are, there's a third way, okay, which I didn't mention. Okay, Typically, someone would say, like, and this typically happens, he or she would say, I, I heard what you said there, or I've seen this presentation, or I've read this resource, and I think I can make it better, or I can bring this, we haven't advertised, but I can bring this to the, to the community. And they, they reach out to them. That means they, and this is the, the idea of confidence as well, correct? Yeah. They, they reach out and say, I'm offering these, my time, my effort, my, my, my expertise to you, to the community, to improve your deliverables for common good, okay? That's the third way. That's the best way. And, and, and that's why going public in these ideas, you know, whether it's through the seminar or webinars, or webcasts or podcasts, et cetera, exposes them to others, they will hear it and they will say, okay, there's something there. I want to make it better. And they reach out. And, and to be honest, most, many, many, many of the people we have have reached out, you know, they, okay. they came in this way. Or if it's not there, or, or if it's something that you are not doing and it might help like to, to, to or give do it, this or idea. Or do it better. Like, like you're doing yeah. this in the dictionary and I, I can do it, to, you know, if you can improve it this way, I can help you in the ontology in the, in the, in the, in the semantic here. I can help you connect with people. I can help you connect with, uh, with, uh, with universities, etc. So I would try to make this explicit as much as possible so people don't have to guess. Yeah. But people who guess and at least try and say, what about, uh, you know, we do this and something that we haven't even thought of, like, that's amazing, like, because it adds more than what you thought, you know, because you could think of what you miss, but if you don't know what you're missing, you don't even know. Exactly, you know, yeah, wouldn't... this is the yeah, most yeah. important. Yeah, so when people see it and say, ah, oh, these people miss this, they yeah. don't know yeah. about it. And this is this thing I mentioned about the process modeling. Someone reached out and said, what about this? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, and a huge benefit. Yeah, yeah, indeed. And uh, there was a saying, no door will open if you don't knock on it, you know? So Absolutely. <laughs> Unless it's automated, of course, but yeah. <laughs> Who is Beam Excellence Initiative for? What kind of people, like, who? what kind of you titles? Tell me. What the, no, no, not me. <laughs> who? Well, okay, take a guess. <laughs> okay, there are civil engineers or engineers uh, working in the construction industry, right? But I mean, mm -hmm. like, are there any groups it's, it's that can benefit more, more about or doesn't matter the roles, the, the positions? It's not for engineers. It's not for architects. It's not for operators. It's not for facility managers. It's not for project managers. It's not for any of these. It is what we call them change agents. Okay. okay. It could be any, any of these, any of them before. Okay. It's, you, are, you are someone who are trying to change not yourself but you have to change the surrounding, these agents, okay? These are the disruptive factor in our industry. These are the people who would benefit from the materials. They are trying to improve their companies, their industries, okay? Because some of them are policymakers, they're like uh, working government, uh, and the initiative is for them. We want to empower them, okay? And you could be a change agent if you're a student. You don't have to be a government minister, you know, doesn't matter. It, to us, you're, you're, the value as a recipient of, of the information or the knowledge you produce is by the amount of positive change you want to impart upon the environment, your environment. Yeah, that makes sense. That sounds very, very good. And uh, by, by the way, there's a model for it. I mean, and, and this is published, but we never, you know, one of the papers, and this is um, maybe, like a treasure hunt for people to find it. Like uh, we, this, this, this type of people is defined in one of the published papers. Uh, it is, I'm just gonna call it number 10. And if people know what I'm talking about, they will find it. And this, these are the, the change agents that sit in the middle of everyone. Uh, you, you could see them, you could not see them, but these are the people who, who connect everything. Okay, the, the number 10 then. <laughs> number 10? Remember. <laughs> is this enough as a resource for someone that that also wants wants to learn more 
about BIM yeah. because uh, people uh, who want to learn more, this nothing is enough for them. We, we, it's it's you can never you can never learn enough. Correct. That's 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 any learner, any like a professional learner, let's say any any learner serious about learning, will tell you that nothing is ever enough. Okay. As we discussed before, it's just a starting point. Just a starting. It's a very simple starting point. You know, it's a starting point, and then you go on your own. You continue your research. Hopefully, you come back and help us grow. But it's just a starting point. It's not enough. Yeah, uh, I was thinking, uh, like as a resource, if aside of this, you have any other resources online that people can can use to learn. Uh, to become better at something in this. everything is about education you will see in, in our you know resources whether it is bimexons.org the bimdictionary.com the bimframework.info the bimthinkspace.com uh you know all the resources that you see connected to the initiative the 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 youtube channel the podcast we've generated we're going to be generating the newsletter so all this are different ways of sharing knowledge with different groups okay so we're not it's never going to be enough and we just want to um share these starting points these templates for people to 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 build upon and to grow on on their own so that's what we're trying to demonstrate that there is a way to instigate change by just spreading seeds. Yeah. From this mind journey you have or a wish list or wish state you want to achieve or you hope for our industry to get to. Mm -hmm. How do you think, how long do you think is going to take until we, we get to a level, a more decent level of uh, cooperation, sharing, openness, and yeah, a, a more uh, proactive uh, way of working. Why? Why do you want? Why do you want all this? I'm just curious. Are, are you optimistic about this, or you just? Yeah, I'm always optimistic, but this is not what. Uh, not not a goal. It's not about this. Yeah, it's not. Uh, no, 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 no. Why? Do why it, do you want? Yeah, you know, well, it's not like it's things change or improve by people stopping being themselves. Like ah, someone is greedy and now stops being greedy and then someone is not uh, collaborative now becomes collaborative no no we ha you have to remove that from the equation you have to make it much more beneficial for people to share much more useful for the individual to share than not share okay you want to make the incentive natural for them you don't want to change people's behavior you can't okay maybe you can a little bit but that's not really a good approach a better approach to make the incentive of sharing and improving your the others of benefit to you and then you will do it yeah yeah i i failed uh trying to think about some kind of metric uh but not necessarily i i i uh, i took the wrong reasons about this but yeah i guess the 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 success magnitude of this is is just going to be defined by by the longevity of the initiative i would say replication if people replicate this behavior they do other initiatives better than ours uh, better resources than ours and and we in one way small way or a big way or whatever have helped that happen that would be the success okay if if people start just you know just share you know just help others okay just do something. Op yeah. do, do something small big whatever that you're passionate about you're good at okay change your environment a bit that's success yeah that that should be enough that should be genuine absolutely that's enough that's enough if we all do something small it will add up correct yeah it will compound as yeah, interest yeah yeah yeah, not, not everyone needs to create a community or you could, many, many people could do much better communities for sure, but it's more about the, the behavior and the, the output, which is intended to improve something other than oneself. Okay. And by that, improving oneself, you know, remember, you never do something for others without really improving yourself, correct? Like you teach while you're yeah. teaching, you're learning. You can, the best way to 
to learn is to teach. Uh, yeah, it's the saying, you know, it's just you, you perfect it because you explain it. From... You don't know it well enough. You cannot teach it to others. Yeah, and you will not know it well enough until you teach it to others. There's two op opposite sides of the same coin. Because if you teach something 10 times, every time you're looking at it from a different angle, different students ask you different questions, correct? Exactly. So as you're teaching, you're learning, correct? As you're sharing, you're gaining, correct? I live by that rule. Yes, I completely agree. Perfect. How can someone get in touch with you if, if that is possible? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, uh, me personally, I'm, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on every, Twitter, you know, just sometimes people get bored from my sharing on, on LinkedIn. I'm, so I'm, I'm open for all types of, uh, you know, people reach out, etc. But the initiative, you know, there's bimexsense.org. We have a Twitter account. We have an Instagram account. We have, we're trying to be in different, different channels and please connect with us, share what we do, offer your expertise, etc., etc. Okay, and, uh, you know, help us to improve. Uh, yeah. Um, thank you very much. Uh, it's, uh, I, I think we could have uh, easily talked two, three, four more hours. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it was really nice to have you here. Uh, thank you for taking the time. And, uh, thank you for the invitation. Me.